Hey guys, this is Colton Tack on Sonic Boom Fan 101, and I'm here with more of my walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 that's running Windows XP Home Edition. And yeah, this is part 13. And yeah, once again, this part of the walkthrough was sponsored by the Sonic Underground 2 DVD pack, The Queen Alina Chronicles, and Dr. Robot Next Revenge. So, um,. I'm here in my basement once again using this computer and I'm here to do it. Alright. And now let's log in. I know it's gonna log me in pretty fast, so yeah, um it's been under a minute and oh okay. Uh alright, something's going on with me. What's going on with the noise here? Okay. So yeah, it's logging me in now, it's like a minute, and, um, yeah. And yeah, about these DVDs right- oh. And the XP startup sound just played. Anyway, like I said, about these Sonic Underground DVDs that are right here, um, I think these are from 2007. So, yeah. So yeah, this computer's finally logging me in. Wow, what a coincidence. I'm, I can't even understand why, but it's still such a shame how this computer is like pretty slow when it logs me in. It's still, it's still fast in some points, but not when it logs me in. I mean, that's the only thing. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, and look at how fast it's showing the desktop, like... It's going pretty faster now. You see that? It finally... It finally started up pretty quickly. And I did not even know. It logged me in like... What the heck? I, it logged me in like pretty fast. Like, it showed the desktop for like about... It, it started showing it while it waited for like a minute. That never happens. But where's the taskbar and icons? I need them. Like, I'm serious. Like, um... <clears throat> wherever they are, I need them. The taskbar should be down here. And the icon should be on the left. And the recycle bin should be at the bottom right. Where are they? I need them. All we have is this adorable picture of Sonic and his friends. But... I don't even know where the taskbar and the icons are. I guess I better pause the recording because it's going to take time for them to show up. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and um <clears throat> had to wait like a few minutes for the computer to Oh. Okay, so anyway, um we're going to go into the my computer application. Oh, sorry if the camera moved a little bit because it's showing the Sonic Underground DVDs. That's okay, so we're going to go to the My Computer application so that way we could find that tutorial for how you can create a budget on Microsoft Money. You know, it's my favorite tutorial of all time on Microsoft Money 2004. It's the best one to choose from, and it's delightful. I love it. So, yeah. Um, wherever it is, I'm pretty sure that... Oh, there's the Embark thing. Okay, how long is this going to take? Like, seriously. Okay, it's going to take time for this thing to load. Like, I don't even know. Even though this computer's, like, pretty old, I still can't understand how we still use a computer like this today. I mean, I, have, I haven't used this computer in like almost six years, and it's like still an old computer for what some reason. Oh, do I have to brighten this down a little bit? Maybe I do, but wait. There's a flashlight. It's loading something, but it's not gonna show it because trying to be such an idiot here.
on that that Windows logo at the top right, if it's waving right there, it means that it's trying to load something. But let me see if the brightness on my camera is correct. Hmm, pretty much correct. So now it's time to like eventually go into the C drive. What the heck? Oh, come on. Get me in. All right, now let's go into program files. And we'll go to Microsoft Money. Go to Media, AV Help. Then, last but not least, we'll go to 10CB. And that will lead to my favorite tutorial of Microsoft Money 2004, how to create a budget. Here we go. I really want to make more conscious decisions about how we spend our money. I know. We need to have enough to pay our bills and meet our expenses. And we need to make sure we have enough reserve for unexpected expenses that come up during the year. Sounds like we're talking about creating a budget. You know, we can use the budget planner in Microsoft Money. Right. It walks us through all the steps. This page gives us the rundown. Look, this says that money can use information from categories and amounts we've already entered. Let's do that then. Pre-filling our budget will save us some work because money will calculate budget estimates for us. Okay, but I'm curious. What if we didn't have any transactions? Or what if we wanted to ignore our transactions and set up a budget completely from scratch? If we didn't have any transactions, we'd get a budget based on the standard set of categories and our scheduled bills and paychecks. We could then fill in other amounts ourselves. Because we do have a history of transactions, we can choose whether or not we want to pre-fill our budget categories. So we start with income. Money fills in any income amounts we've already provided, including our scheduled paychecks and deposits. See, here's the total for our salaries. If we had any other sources of income, like bonuses or overtime, we could enter them here too. If we want, we can change any of these income amounts. Now we click Next. Expenses. Anything special here? It's just what you think it is. Our monthly bills and expenses. So how do we know that this is really a good amount to budget for food? Just like with income, money fills in amounts based on our past spending and our scheduled bills and transfers. We can take a closer look at our transactions for food, either in a chart, like this, or in a list, like this. And if we click Edit, we can change any budget amount we want. I think this is a reasonable estimate. We can always come back and change it later if we find we're eating out more. Or practicing our gourmet cooking. <laughs> our budgeted expenses can even account for our occasional spending. You mean like house repairs and car insurance? Geico. Again, money calculates our past spending in these categories. But how do we budget for car maintenance? We shouldn't have to fix the cars every month. This is an average of what we've been spending on car maintenance for the past couple of years. And see, even though it's on a yearly basis rather than monthly, we're still budgeting for it. This is a reasonable yearly amount for car maintenance. These categories look exactly like the ones we use when entering transactions in our accounts. They are. Look, it even has the custom categories we've set up for ourselves. This must be how the budget and our accounts are linked together. Right. And these broader items are the budget groups set up by money. I get it. This will help us see spending summaries for these major items in budget charts and reports. Well, this is good news. Our budget works. I know. And we have money left over after expenses. What do you want to do with unbudgeted income? Hmm, good question. If we just want to make sure we have enough to pay our expenses, we can say we'll spend it all. But we can also save the excess for occasional or large expenses. So to make sure we have enough for our next vacation, or even next year's holiday spending, we can put it here. And then maybe we won't have to use our credit cards as much as we have in the past. Now we can see whether our savings goal works with our budget. Good, it does. Here's a budget summary and a chart showing the breakdown. Look, our total monthly expenses. That's good to know. And here's our savings goal. What would we do if our budget didn't work? If we were spending more than we have? We'd probably need to lower our budgeted expenses and try it again. Money does the calculations and tells us whether we balance or not. Well, we have a good budget. Now what? Anytime we want to see how we're doing, we can come to this page for a summary. It tells us whether we're within or over budget. What if one month we need to take money from one budget category to use for another? 
Like when Aaron sprung that school trip on us at the last minute. We can reallocate budgeted expenses between categories. Reallocating keeps us from breaking our budget. And if we need to really revise our budget, we can always go through whatever part of the budget setup process we want. It would be great if we could know in advance when we're reaching our budget limits. We can do that. We can set our spending limits in money according to our budget amounts. As we enter transactions related to the budget categories, money shows us one of these spending thermometers. Finally, we know where our money is going, and we'll be able to keep our expenses under control. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's a tutorial for how to create a budget in Microsoft Money 2004. In the next part, we'll show you how to create an investment account. So, yeah. Anyway, before we go, we're going to do one more thing. And we're going to need to, like, go into something really cool. So, where should I go? Um, maybe I should, like, test out the narrator thing. Let's click on narrator and watch what happens, because I never did this yet. Foreground window, Microsoft Narrator. Narrator is a text-to-speech program that can help people with low vision set up their own computers or use other people's computers. Narrator might not perform well with some programs and only speaks in English. Most users with visual impairments will need a screen reader with higher functionality for daily use. For a list of Windows-based screen readers, see the Microsoft website. To have Narrator repeat this or any text, press Control plus Shift plus Spacebar. I don't need Do to not see. show this message. We got it. Window. Narrator. And yeah, the voice we have for this is, is my, yeah, the, the Microsoft Sam with the natural voice. Listen to it. Foreground window, narrator, help, push button to press, use space bar. Foreground window, start, push button, running application for. So, uh, it's not really loud enough, so let me turn it up a bit. Okay. Foreground window, narrator, help, push button. To press, use space bar. Now read for ground. Okay, so, um, yeah. I think in Windows 2000, it seems that, um, Microsoft, Sam's original voice from Speakonia is there, so, yeah. Foreground, foreground, foreground. Foreground, foreground window. Program manager, desktop, list. Program manager, client. Pop-up start. Pop tool pick dimensions. Pop-up menu end. Alright, let's click on it. There, we got a Windows Media Player. Click right here. Foreground window. Windows Media Player. Tool pick Playhouse Disney. Imagine and learn with music. Yep. Microsoft Sam pronounced it correctly. Playhouse Disney, imagine and learn with music. I might get a new copy of this CD somehow. Playhouse Disney theme. Okay, I don't think... Wait. Pop, pop, start. Menu end. List. Playhouse Disney theme. Generic version. The Wiggles. List item. JoJo's Circus theme song from JoJo's Circus. JoJo's Circus list item. Hope you like spinning from JoJo's Circus. JoJo we get that. stop and go pretzel. Brush your teeth. Clown around. Sharing with your friends here in Higley Town from Higley Town. What the crap? Microsoft Sam mispronounced Higley Town. L let me play that again. Here in Higley Town from oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he mispronounced it. That's not how you pronounce Higley Town, Microsoft Sam. Oh my gosh. If you want to pronounce it correctly, Sam, pronounce it like y you need uh, someone needs to space it like they need a space in between Higley and Town. Th then he will pronounce like it Higley to Town. New friends, the translator song. Friends are heroes from Higley Town. Heroes. Ripped pants. Stop mispronouncing it, okay? Ripped pants, blues, the tailor song. 
Cloud Cloud Day, the life card sun. A rainy day, the teacher sun. Day, it's a brand new day, from breakfast with beer. The morning mambo, the breakfast sun. The Koala Brothers theme sun, from the Koala Brothers. The helping sun, from the Koala Brothers. Roly poly oly theme sun. He mispronounced poly. It's not roly poly oly, it's roly poly oly. You need to, you need to pronounce it correctly. The twirl. In the Wiggles world, the Wiggles. Wobbly hoopsie the doodle. Wait, what the heck? Wobbly hoopsie the... It's wobbly whoopsie. Together forever the doodle bops. Wiggle. Yeah, yeah, and Sam pronounced the doodle bops correctly. Just to let you know. Woodland Valley Cha Cha from Bear in the Big Blue. Wait, didn't he mispronounce Cha Cha? Let me hear that again. Woodland Valley Cha Cha. What the heck? Woodland Valley Cha Cha. I have no words. We're all different from Bear in the Big Blue House. Bear in yep, Bear in the Big Blue House. My man Stanley theme song from Stanley and Iris. Stanley, there's that just you and me from Stanley and Iris. Q U, they might be giants. Yep, they might be giants. They dig Q U. Clap your hands. And clap your hands. Little Einstein's theme song from Little Einstein's. Little Einstein's list item. Yep. The Little Einstein's theme song is the only Little Einstein's theme song. It's the only song from the Little Einstein's on this album. It's a great way to end the album, though. Julia the Flatlanders. And I remember when I clicked on this one, this is what happened. Sister Beam Slaughterbone, list item. I remember that part. I'm through Big Chestnut, list item. And I'm gonna get out of here. Tool tip, clip foreground window, start port. At pop 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 foreground. I'm gonna window. go to control panel. Windows, control panel, control panel, client, back, split button, unavailable, forward, split button, unavailable, sounds, speech, at foreground. I'm gonna window. close this. Foreground window. I click speech. Minimize this for a minute. Now I'll click text to speech. Watch this. You have selected Microsoft Sam as the computer's default voice. Yep. So, um, let's make him say something. I'm gonna let it put this tablet down for a minute because I don't want to hurt my hands while typing. Sorry about this, viewers. Uh, I accidentally stopped the recording. So, this 13th this part will be split into two parts. So, the, the recording accidentally stopped when I, when I was typing in this thing, so. And also, um... I'm going to have to put the two parts together of this 13th part so that way I can have this in one part. So that's that. Windows XP rocks. It's my all-time favorite operating system. That, I agree with that. So yeah, that sounds pretty nice. I like how Microsoft Sam said that. Like, he said that Windows XP rocks and it, it's his all-time favorite operating system. It's my all-time favorite as well. Wow, Microsoft Sam, you're the best. Anyway... Time to shut down this computer because I have to do it. So yeah, that's about it for part 13 of my walkthrough of Windows XP Home Edition on the Dell Dimension 4600. So yeah, sorry if this video got split into two parts because of my accidentally stopping the recording. But I'm going to have to like, uh, let's hope this doesn't happen in the next part anymore. So yeah, that's that. Stay tuned for part 14 coming tomorrow. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic Boom Fan 101 signing off. Thanks for watching.